Welcome to Worship with Clinton Presbyterian Church. Thank you everyone for joining us either in person or online this morning. We are glad you are here for worship today. Today we are happy to welcome our own Francisco Ramos to our pulpit. As we listen to the prelude, please take a deep breath, settle into your space, and look around at all the beautiful faces of those who are gathered here this morning. Let us pray. As sunflowers seek the sun, we have come here seeking your face, O God. Hear our prayers. Revive us from the slumber of violence, greed, and willful, willful ignorance. Raise us up like a host of sunflowers ready to spread seeds of new life. Amen. Please join me in taking a moment to greet one another with peace. Don't forget to come up to the camera and greet the folks on Zoom. The peace of Christ be with you. Am I on? Yes, I am on. Okay, well, 134. You guys know this one by now. There's a sweet, sweet spirit.
sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Heavenly Dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Please be seated. The intro has three parts. One part is for me. One will be for anyone who is in the sanctuary in person this morning in italics. And one will be for those joining us remotely in bold. Those joining us via Zoom, please unmute your mics so that we can hear you. God, we have come to put words. We are here to remember, we are here to remember, remember your, your promises. We are here to remember your love. And to remember, remember it when, when we are far away. away. God, put your words and your love into our hearts. Amen. Amen. Hear now the call to reconciliation. Jesus calls us as members of the church to be accountable to God and to one another. Confessing our sin, repairing the damage done, and working together for reconciliation. And whenever two or three gather in his name, let us pray. God of our ancestors, you have remained faithful to us from generation to generation, but we have broken our promise in your good news. Forgive us, we pray. Recreate us as your people and restore us to your image. Continue to bless us and let us be a blessing for others. the act of praise. We are forgiven, we are forgiven, we are forgiven for all the things we have done and the things we failed to do. We are forgiven our sins against God and our sins against one another. We are forgiven, we are forgiven, we are forgiven 77 times or even 70 times seven but over and over and always. Thanks be to God. We should sing, huh? <laughs> All right, um, we're gonna sing 574. I'm gonna live um, so God can use me. The extra verses are at the bottom, if you haven't done this in a while. There we are. Yeah, you can see them online too. Cool. Stand if you're able. Yeah, thank you. I can't count today, guys. <laughs> Here, we'll do this together. I'm gonna live. Oh, God can use me.
sing so God can use me anytime and anywhere I'm gonna sing so God can use me Please be seated. Our first scripture reading comes from Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 through 5. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed they were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me, hero, and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me. You and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that, have, that you have, I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you, all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. This morning comes from Romans chapter 11, verses 1 to 2a and 29 to 32. Romans 11, verses 1 to 2a, 29 to 32. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people for whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. This is the word of God.
Let us pray. We thank you, God, for this beautiful day and for this family as we get together here to meditate on your word. Please guide us and give us a message for our, for our living process this morning. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. The scripture that we just read is very, it's very powerful. When I was reading it uh, to think about this message, it really came to me. Did God reject his people? By no means. And so I decided to meditate this morning with you about the fact that had God has not rejected us. God has not rejected us. And it's very powerful. Um, and in the first reading, as we heard, the scripture brings us the message of the family of Joseph. And that story starts kind of at the end this morning. You know, Joseph smiles with his brothers. Um, but it's a long story before that, right? It's the, the story of Joseph, and not only the story of Joseph, but the story of Jacob and the family, and how God passes the blessing through the family of Jacob and Joseph. And we all have heard the term, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So this is one of the main stories in the, in the, in the scripture with uh, Joseph and Jacob. Um, but this family of Jacob, as we know, was not a perfect family, just like any family on this planet is not perfect. All of our families are imperfect, just as we all are imperfect. And the scripture also to give us testimony about the imperfections of this family. You know, the fights between the brothers, and, uh, you know, the envy between the brothers and Jacob not being a very good father and having a preference for J Benjamin and, and, and for Joseph over all his other brothers. We have heard the story of the coat of many colors, right? At a time when uh, printing colors and fabrics with color were very uh, rare, uh, Jacob not only creates a, a, a code with color for Joseph, but a code of many colors. And I can just imagine Joseph wearing that code and reminding his brothers every single day, I am the favorite of our, of our father, right? And so this resentment grows in the heart of uh, Joseph's brothers until they decide to get rid of him, and they do, right? They sell him as a slave to a caravan that is going to Egypt and so on. The story is very known. It's one of the stories of them. Um, but this family with, his, with, his, with their imperfections had the blessing of God. Just like all of our families have the blessing of God. And God has not rejected us. And that is good to know. Uh, my wife Claudia and I are following the the female soccer um, World Cup, and I can just re I can just imagine all those players after so many games and so many uh, uh, struggles and efforts, and then they lose by a penalty or whatever, and they got to go, they have to go home and they play. Probably in their hearts feel really God has rejected us. God has abandoned us. Right? We we came and did our best, and now we have to go home because we lost, and so. The circumstances that we live sometimes lead us to that point, right? And all of us, I'm sure, know that feeling in our hearts, whether we are young and we're in school or whether we are dealing with issues as parents or at work, you know, we, the circumstances kind of makes us feel, where is God in the picture, right? And we feel that God has rejected us. And Paul mentions this here to the Romans because Paul knows that that's a feeling that's in our hearts. And he rightfully says, God has not rejected his people. And that's a, that, that's a tremendous message for us this morning. My brothers and sisters, God has not rejected us. 
I don't know what's happening and happening in your lives this morning, but the message is very powerful. God has not rejected us. And we have in our congregation, um, you know, a membership from Cameroon, and the situation in Cameroon is not easy, and there is violence, and there is repression, and people are living, trying to be safe, and the circumstances makes us feel, I am sure that people in Cameroon feel sometimes, where is God in this whole picture? Right? And this morning, the scripture says, God has not rejected us. And it's very powerful. And the message does not stop there. It's not only that God has not rejected us, but the story this morning also tells us God is in the background. When we read the story of Joseph, it is not only that God is still with Joseph, it is that God is working behind the screens to use this evil action on the part of Joseph's brothers to make it into something good, right? So, so God brings Joseph into Egypt and he uses Joseph being in Egypt to continue protecting his family. And the reading that we have today is that moment when they realize there is food in Egypt. We don't have food. But there is food in Egypt. We need to go talk to this man and try to get food, not realizing this man is our brother. This man is the person who we sold into slavery. And now the story goes that Jacob, as you probably know, when Jacob was a young man, he fell in love with a woman by the name of Rachel. He loved Rachel with a passion. And he was working with uh, his uncle, and Rachel was his uncle's daughter. And he came to his uncle and said, you know, I love Rachel. What can I do for you to give Rachel to me in marriage? And he said, well, you have to work for me seven years. And after seven years, I'll give you Rachel. So Jacob works for seven years for his uncle, Laban, and when the time comes for Laban to give Rachel to Jacob, Laban kind of plays a trick on him because he sends the bride with all the tire and, you know, the bale and whatever, and Jacob don't know who this woman is. And in the, the next morning, he realizes this is not Jacob, this is Leah, her sister. So he goes to Laban and says, what did you do? I asked you for Rachel, and Lavan says, well, you know, in our family, there is this tradition, I cannot give Rachel to you because Leah is older. And Leah needs to be given in marriage. He says, well, but I love Rachel. What do I do now? Well, you have to work seven more years for me, Lavan says, and then I'll give you Rachel. Wives, you have Leah. And you have Rachel. And so he works seven more years for Laban, and at the end he gets Rachel. And then to make the story more complicated, Rachel is not able to have children. And time goes by, and Joseph, uh, Jacob starts to have a family, a large family, but he doesn't have children from the woman he loves and he had loved since he was young. So in his old age, Rachel conceives a child, and that's Joseph. That is why Jacob loves Joseph with a passion, because he's the son that he had with the woman he loved since he was young. And this is the man that his brothers sell into slavery. And then Rachel gives him another, another son and dies in, in, in the, while delivering this baby. And that's Benjamin. So this story tells us that Joseph tells his brothers, you have to go home and you need to bring Benjamin. And of course, the brothers at that point in time, after so many years, 
of seeing their father suffering because because Joseph was not with him, they realized we did wrong and our father is suffering, right? So one of these brothers comes to Joseph and says, if we bring that boy to you, my dad is going to die before him because he knew what they did, right? So this whole story is heartbreaking. And Joseph stays his ground and says, well, if you don't bring a boy, you will not, you will not be able to have food for me. So they go back home and they tell their father and so on. And at the end, all of them reconcile. And God is kind of working behind the screens. And we know that we know at this point in time, when we look back, we know the larger story, right? The, the people of Jacob are going to go and live in Israel for 400 years. And they are going to become slaves. And then God is going to send a liberator in the person of Moses. So God, God is working on this huge plan that they don't know. And I'm telling you this morning that I don't know what's happening in our lives this morning, and Paul is reminding us God has not rejected us. But I tell you, God has a plan, and God is working at that plan right now. And there is a reason why we're here in this church this morning. And that is actually the spirit of Christianity. The spirit of the of, of Christianity is to try to maintain that consciousness every day that God has a plan for me. And to try to figure out what that plan is, but to not forget that God has not rejected us. God is with us every day of the age. And God has a plan. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for these uh, few minutes and for your the power of your scripture that always comes fresh and that always comes uh, to give us the food and the, the 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 nurturing that we need. God, we ask you that you help us remember every day that you are with us and that you have a plan and to help us see what that plan is in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our hearts. And yet, even in this, you provide for us, sending your spirit to intercede on our behalf. Hear our prayers this moment. For those seeking peace amid chaotic circumstances, whose lives are filled with hardship or distress, persecution or hunger, vulnerability, oppression or danger, we pray for protection, power and perseverance. For those who perpetuate and benefit from oppression, whose lives have been carefully crafted to shelter them from pain of others, we pray in breaking, upsetting, and re restoration of connection to you and to one another. For those whose mustard seed sized faith has been stretched as far as it could go, we ask for your grace and courage. For all of us, as we navigate our way through a world without clear paths forward or clear options, help us to have the wisdom to choose what is faithful over what it's self-serving, what is nourishing rather than what detracts. O oh God who searches our hearts and knows our minds, we trust and believe that all things work together for good for those who love you and who are called according to your purpose. Let us participate in this good work and true purpose for the sake of all creation. In faith and love we pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to say, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. is now the call for the offering. Thank you to everyone who has shown love for our community by giving to support the church this week. God's call to us is woven into the very fabric of creation, for God has given to us every good thing, entrusting us to be stewards of all we have received. If you are able, please take a moment to visit our online giving site. You can mail your offering to the church. And for those in person, you are invited to bring your offering up and place it in the basket after we had started singing. Is there anyone who feels called to, to lead us? Budjim, you want to hold the basket or you want to sing a song? All right, come on up. Budjim's going to hold the basket. Is there anyone who feels called to lead us in a song this morning? So please stand if you're able. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving. Kings, Lord of Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Bajim. You may be seated. Let us pray. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you have given us many different gifts for service in the one body of Christ. Use us, our gifts and offerings, to do your will in the world, contributing to those in need, making peace with our neighbors, and overcoming evil with good. Amen. And now we have a Monday Minute. Surprise. Um, I was surprised. Um, I just hope I did a slide. I know we put some slides in. I hope I updated them. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been a busy summer, and I don't remember if I'm coming or going half the time. But look, I did update it. Amazing. All right. <laughs> um, 
we, uh, you know, the, the checking account is a little low, about $400 uh, in there. Um, our savings account uh, still remains steady with the different funds. Um, we have one bill uh, still left to pay with a couple coming in here at the end of the month. So um, that $400 is not going to go very far. Uh, so um, definitely looking for uh, some help. Um, we've borrowed about $500 from ourselves to help with current uh, current bills and things like that. Um, I'd love to get to the point where we can put that back. Um, but your regular contributions are super helpful. So keep them coming. That's what um, is going to help keep us on track. So um, what's it? Oh, it says 44, not 400. Great, 44, even less. The $44 is not going to go far. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so keep those regular contributions coming. The savings account balances are close, but they're not entirely updated because every day this week, this last couple of weeks has been like a week. So, you know, there we go. We'll get, we'll get everything cleaned up um, next week when summer camp is over, and I will have a few more hours and a few more brain cells uh, to focus on everything. Um, but the bottom line is we're holding, we're holding our own. We are, we're getting things paid. I know that, um, that this congregation will come through. Um, so are there any questions? Fantastic. All right, let's move on to additional announcements. Uh, so we're always looking for uh, volunteers Coffee hosts um, and Sunday school teachers are um, high priority right now. So if you are interested um, in learning how to be a coffee host, um, there's a wealth of people you can check in with. Um, Jen Dickinson, when she is not online, would be happy to help, and Luann, and I know there's others out there who um, know how to make coffee. Don't ask me, I don't know how to make coffee. Um, I, however, am in charge of Sunday school, so if you are looking to uh, hang out with some kids uh, and teach them about the word of God. Um, and that's all you need to know is just, you know, how to, how to hang out with kids. Um, I am looking for a few qualified people. Sunday school is all about having fun uh, and making church a warm and welcoming place. Sunday school will start um, September 10th. So, yeah, I think September 10th. Well, we have a curriculum. You don't have to make it up. Um, you're just going to get to follow along. It's pretty pretty simple, um, and you can embellish and add your talents um, where you see them. Um, we're also looking for greeters and Zoom hosts and tech deacons and worship leaders. Um, you can still support the kids in Jen Dickinson's seventh grade classroom. Uh, snacks, period products, things like that. There's a bin under the table. It's gray and white. Uh, feel free to just put things in there. Uh, Kiana is having a birthday party on Saturday, the 26th, uh, 215 Robin Street in Waltham. Uh, everyone is invited, uh, and that's around 2 o'clock. Uh, there is a fall concert that's going to be held here uh, in the church on September 23rd, uh, 5 o'clock, and that's with a group called the Thurston Consort. Uh, it's $25 a ticket. You can see Bobby Ann or Francisco uh, for that. There might be some posters still in the back. Um, so you can take them, post them around. Uh, the concert is a fundraiser to help support our efforts to get an elevator uh, in the church so that we can be even more accessible uh, to all folks, uh, especially as we are aging. Are there any other announcements? I don't know. We're all just bionic with our, you know, replaced parts around here. <laughs> Any other announcements? All right. So then let's go ahead and go to our closing prayer. Please join me as you have in other parts of the service in one of three parts in this prayer. One part will be for me, the worship leader. One will be for anyone in the sanctuary this morning, and that is in italics and one will be for those joining us remotely in bold. If you are joining us on Zoom, please unmute your mic so that we can hear you. We have been set free. 
We have been given new life.